Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we're doing my AFCON 2025 Call of Bars review for the October edition, guys. We have a lot to unpack here, guys. And get your popcorn ready, guys. Get your drinks ready, guys. Because I have a lot to unpack here, especially about one certain team that we're going to get on to when we get to Group F. You guys know what team I'm talking about, by the way. So we're going to go ahead and unpack everything, guys. So please remember to watch this entire video. And yeah, just let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's start with Group A, guys. Group A. We got here Tunisia, Comoros, Gambia, Madagascar. Shout out to Comoros. Comoros did amazing this month. They won. They got four points against Tunisia. And you could, you could probably argue that Tunisia is the best team in this group. The fact that Comoros is unbeaten is insane to me. And for Tunisia, as I said, man, it's a weird one because Tunisia is the type of team that is a team that could excel as underdogs, but also underperform when they're like the favorites. Now, I still reckon that Tunisia will qualify for the AFCON. I believe they should. And if they don't, it'll be a disgrace. It'll be an embarrassment. Although, to be fair, Tunisia did do pretty bad at last AFCON. So it wouldn't come as that big of a surprise to me. But still, I would expect them to qualify. And for that second place, guys, it's really between Comoros and Gambia. With all, <laughs> with all due respect, I don't see Madagascar doing it. I think Madagascar will um, not do it. So it's, it's gonna, it's basically between Comoros and Gambia. At the moment, I'm leaning towards more of Gambia simply because Gambia are hosting Cam Comoros next month, and I have a sneaky feeling that Gambia will get the win. Now, if Comoros manage to get a draw, which would be great for them, then it puts Gambia in a position where they have to play against. I believe. Let's actually look at the November games real quick. Um, they have to play uh, Tunisia on the road. So, for Gambia, my thing is that they have to try to beat um, Comoros at home. Because Tunisia away, even if Tunisia have already qualified, I still wouldn't take that risk because it's an away game for them. So, I think for Tunisia, uh, for Gambia, they have to beat Comoros. As for Comoros, great. If they could get a draw against Gambia and beat Madagascar, puts them in a great position. And as for Madagascar, I just think it's going to be too hard for them. I just don't see them doing it. They have to beat Tunisia, and they have to beat Comoros away, which isn't going to happen. So, for Madagascar, we can. I, I just don't think it's likely. So, right now, I'm going to say Gambia and Tunisia, but Comoros could definitely do it, man. I think Comoros have what it takes. And I think Comoros has said, man, they need to get that draw on the road. And if they can get that draw, four points, great for them. And for Gambia, three points would be good for them. But remember, uh, Comoros are already, um, they're one point ahead of Gambia. So, um, it's going to be interesting. So, like, let's say Comoros do get four points, like 10. Gambia gets three, eight. So, it won't be enough. So, like, that's why I'm saying that for Gambia in particular, they have to try to get something against Tunisia, too, because that might also be crucial in deciding this group and how this group pans out. But, yeah, we have a very interesting group A upon us. Group B, guys, I'm not going to spend too much time here. This group is, I already feel, is very much decided already. I don't see much of it happening. Morocco have already qualified with 12 points. They're on cruise control. La Soto are pretty much out. And now it's between Gabon and Central African Republic. And with all due respect, it should be Gabon. Gabon are still yet to Central African Republic still have to play Gabon. And I just think Gabon will take it to get the better of. So, yeah, I don't really think there's any. We don't have to really discuss too much about this group in detail. Group C. Now, Group C is a bit interesting, guys. Because Group C is a lot more interesting than it should be. Because Egypt have already qualified. They've taken care of business. They have beat uh, Martinia both games. Shout out to Boston. Botswana actually managed to beat Cape Verde in both games, did the double over them, which is impressive. And now it puts this group in a predicament where could Botswana actually do it? Because if I'm not mistaken, guys, let's just do a quick Google check. Let's do a quick Google check, guys. I believe Botswana have never made the AFCON in their history. No, they've only made it once, which was in 2012. So I'm actually wrong there. But it will be their second ever appearance for Botswana if they manage to do it. So can Botswana actually do it? Because here's the thing, guys. Botswana has to play against Mauritania and Egypt. See, the Egypt game is a tricky because even though Egypt already qualified, I believe that game is in Egypt Stadium. If I'm not mistaken, or is that at home? Yeah, it's it's at Egypt Stadium. So that's where I'm I'm a bit concerned with Botswana is that they have to beat Mauritania. I think if they can beat Mauritania, they put themselves in a great position. And remember, the last time they played against Mauritania, it was only a one nil loss for them on the road. So. And Martinez scored in the 84th minute. So I think Botswana can do this. It's just a matter of they have to get something against Egypt, potentially. Because Cape Verde, I think at Cape Verde, even though Egypt have already qualified, I don't think, I'm not sure if Cape Verde is going to beat Egypt. 
So it's going to be interesting, guys, to see what happens. Remember, guys, head-to-head -head is a tiebreaker here, guys. Head-to-head -head is a tiebreaker. So um, that's why I think Cape Verde is almost out of contention because even if they win one of the games and Botswana loses both games, Cape Verde still will have a worse head-to-head -head than Botswana because Botswana did the double. So I think Cape Verde is in a really bad position. Martinia, I think they're in a, I think they're in a better position than Cape Verde. So at the time, uh, at the time, I'm gonna lean towards more Martinia, but I'm really hoping Botswana do prove me prove, prove me wrong because I think it would be amazing if Botswana could do it, guys. It'd be amazing. And considering Cape Verde and Martinia were there at the last AFCON, it would be quite some achievement. Group D. Now this group is a bit tricky to uh to talk about, guys, because obviously there's a lot of uncertainty with this group. We don't know what's gonna happen with the Libya Nigeria game because obviously that got postponed due to the Nigeria players being stranded at the airport. Now. I'm going to assume that Nigeria gets a win by default, meaning that they get a 3-0 win and put themselves in 10 points and pretty much leaving Libya out of contention. But here's the thing, though. If Libya do manage to get the three points, put themselves a 4, 7, 6, 5, 4, we have a very interesting match day 5 coming up. What do I think is going to happen? I think Nigeria will get the win by default. I don't think Libya will get the win. So I think that puts pretty much uh, Libya out of contention. Now... It's a matter of who's going to get that second place between Benin and Rwanda. At the moment, I'm leaning towards more um, Benin. But remember, um, Rwanda actually did manage to beat Benin at home, which is crucial. And for Benin, they have to play against Nigeria at home, and they have to play against Libya on the road. So I think for Benin, it's great for them. Whereas Rwanda, it's kind of tough for them because they have to play Libya at home, which they should win, obviously. But then they have Nigeria win. So I think the fixtures are actually more in Benin's favor because Benin have the game at home, whereas not, um, Rwanda have to play away. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in that regard. But yeah, like I said, guys, uh, we'll see what happens with the poll decision. I'll probably make a YouTube short, uh, make an announcement, whatever happens, because at the time of recording this video, no announcement has been made yet. The group E we got here, it is Algeria, Ecuador, Guinea, Togo, Liberia. Um, th this pretty much group is already decided. Algeria is going to top the group 100%, 12 points. Then cruise control, Liberia, it's pretty much out. Not really much to say there. Now, for actual Guinea, Togo. Actual Guinea really should be doing this. Togo, I don't think they're going to do it. I think Togo is a bridge too far for them. Because even though they're still mathematically in contention, it's very unlikely they're going to do it. They even haven't, haven't won a game. And for actual Guinea, I think they just need one more point. I think one more point will be enough for them to seal it. And Togo are playing against actual Guinea at home. Now, if Togo do manage to win that game, puts themselves on five points, Goes to the final match today. But I think Togo, let's see, they have to play against, let's see, I think Togo have to play against, um, yeah, Liberia. So, now that actually, to be fair, maybe Togo could actually do it because Liberia already eliminated. So maybe if Togo, but the thing is, Togo have to win both games. I don't know if Togo's going to win both games. I, I don't know if they are going to. Worst for to Guinea, they got Algeria at home, and they got Togo away. So, I don't know. I, I feel like Exo Guinea should do this, but maybe Togo could pull off a surprise, but I still think it's unlikely. And now we move to Group F. Let's talk about this country, Ghana. Ghana has been a disgrace. Ghana haven't been relevant in football for a long time now, guys. The last time Ghana was relevant in, 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 the, in, in the sense of Africa was probably 2017. That's probably been the last time Ghana was relevant. And there were, um, that was the last time I think they made the semifinals of AFCON that year. They haven't made a semifinals of AFCON since then. They have failed to make 2018 World Cup. Yes, they made the 2022 World Cup, but let's be real. As good as the 2022 World Cup was, it was paper and slow cracks because that Ghana team was not that good. Because that Ghana team were defensively shambles the World Cup. They missed a golden opportunity to get a result against Uruguay. They didn't even have to beat Uruguay. They just needed a draw to get past, and they still couldn't get a draw. And Uruguay managed to prevail, and Luis Suarez had the last lap. Then as you look at the last two Afghans, Ghana haven't even won a game in the, uh, the group stage. They're losing to teams like Comoros. They're not even beating Madagascar. Sorry, not Madagascar. Um, Mozambique. Sorry, should I say? Do you see where this issue with Ghana is? That they're they've just been so underachievers, and now they're in a position where they're not going to even make the Afcon. Because I know Ghana isn't officially out yet, but it's almost likely they're out. Because here's the thing: Ghana had to win both games against Niger and against Angola. And keep in mind, the Angola game is on the road, and they have to hope. That Sudan doesn't even beat. Sudan would have to basically lose to Niger. And the chance of that happening is very slim. I don't see it happening. And shout out to Sudan, man, by the way. Sudan has been on an incredible rise this year. They're top of the World Cup qualifying groups. 
they're in the second right now, the AFCON. They're going to make the AFCON, in my opinion. It's like 97% sure. And I actually want to check, when was the last time Sudan made an AFCON tournament? Because I actually don't know, actually, top of my head. I think it would be some achievement if they could manage to do this. So let's see, competitor record. Wow. They have never made an AFCON. Oh, sorry, this is the World Cup. Yes, they have made the AFCONs before, but they haven't made it. They haven't made it since. Wow. So they actually got a decent amount of AFCONs. They got like a decent amount of appearances. But this will be amazing for them, though. To qualify for the AFCON at the expense of Ghana. And keep in mind, Ghana haven't missed the AFCON since 2004. So it'll be amazing. It'll be an amazing achievement for Sudan. And a shout out to Sudan, man. Incredible achievement. Defensively, very good. And yeah. And as for Ghana, man, I feel so bad for Kudos. I feel so bad for Kudos. And that uh, manager, Joe Adu, probably needs to get sacked. Because you know what the weird thing is, guys? Ghana's doing so well in the World Cup qualifiers. But they haven't been good in the AFCON qualifiers, which is crazy. And so for Ghana, my thing is that just accept that you failed the AFCON, move on to the World Cup, use those two matches remaining as preparation, and try to figure, try to make the World Cup. Because I'm sorry, Ghana have to make the World Cup. If you don't make the World Cup and miss out the AFCON, it will be a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. So Ghana, you better not allow that to happen. Um, and yeah, so shout out to Angola, they've already qualified. They got the double over Niger, as expected. And yeah, man, so shout out to um, Angola for doing it, man. Moving on to Group G, we got here. It is Ivory Coast, Zambia, Sierra Leone, and Chad. Now, shout out to Sierra Leone because they actually managed to beat Ivory Coast at home, which is crucial. Give themselves a glimmer of hope to qualify. I still think Ivory Coast will do it. I still think they are going to do it. They have to play against Chad, uh, which I believe is at home. So they're, they're probably going to take care of business, right? And then they have to play Zambia. Now, keep in mind that Zambia game is on the road. I think it should be Ivory Coast and Zambia. I don't think Sierra Leone and Chad are good enough, to be honest with you guys. Even though Sierra Leone have maybe put themselves back in contention, I just think they're just too good. I just think they're too good. And so, yeah, man, um, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. The Group H, man, DR Congo, man, 100% record. They're, bad, they're they're looking good now. DR Congo is obviously qualified. And for Guinea, man, they did the double over Ethiopia, which was to be expected. And now it should be it should be, it should be Guinea. Uh, and remember, but they did lose to Tanzania at home, though. So for Guinea, man, I think, if, I think Tanzania have to beat Guinea. And then Ethiopia play against Tanzania. So Tanzania, man, Tanzania might be in a better position than Guinea because Guinea have lost at home. And Guinea have to play against the Congo. But keep in mind, the Congo have already qualified. So for Guinea, as I said, man, they better make the AFCON. They better make the AFCON. With Grossi at the helm, yeah, I mean, I think he scored a hat-trick if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Shout out to Guinea, man. Shout out to Guinea. Group I, man, we got here is Group I. We got here Mozambique, Mali, Guinea, Bissau, Aswatini. Um, Eswatini is pretty much out. They're pretty much they're pretty much out. So there's not really much to discuss there. Now here's the thing, guys. This is actually interesting because Mali, even though they're still perfect, they have they have not been as good as we expect them to be. Mali should still qualify. I expect them to qualify. They play against Eswatini next, and they should be able to beat them. At the Mozambique, they can play against. Um, um, sorry, actually, Mali plays against Eswatini last. Sorry, should I say? A Mozambique play against Mali. I think it should be Mozambique and Mali that should make it through. I don't think any of us are that good. Um, although, to be fair, they haven't really conceded that many goals. They won't concede three goals. But then again, Mozambique have also done so. But I just don't think any of us have scored enough goals. That's the thing. So, I, I think it should be Mozambique and Mali making it through. And then Group J, guys. Wow. Cameroon, man. Shout out to Cameroon. They qualified. Ten points. Unbeaten. And shout out to Zimbabwe, man. Zimbabwe. What an achievement, man. They have actually done the double over Namibia. That was there in the last AFCON. And you know what the weird thing is? Namibia was actually good in the last AFCON. They weren't that bad. And the fact that Zimbabwe actually did the double over them is quite impressive. Kenya is in a really bad position. Because after the hammering they got against Cameroon, both home and away, Kenya has to play against Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe just need one point. Zimbabwe just need one point to secure the bag. And I think they're going to do it, guys. I think Zimbabwe is going to make the AFCON. I think Kenya is going to miss out. And I, I just don't see um, Kenya doing it, man. I don't see Kenya doing it with all due respect. And um, for Zimbabwe, man, it would be good to see them back in the AFCON. They missed out in the last edition. So I think they were there in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, shout out to them. The Group K, man. Uh, we got Uganda, South Africa, Congo, South Sudan. I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think Uganda, South Africa has got this in control. Congo's goal difference, even though they're on four points, the goal difference minus six is really bad. 
So I, I don't think it's going to happen. Although, to be fair, heads to head is the tiebreaker, so maybe they have a glimmer of hope. But um, Congo has to play against Uganda at home. Maybe if they can win that game, put themselves in a good position, but I, I just don't see it happening. And then for Group L, the final group we got here, this group is already decided. Burkina Faso, Senegal have already qualified. And Burundi, Malawi are out. So shout out to Burkina Faso, Senegal for doing it, guys. We'll see you guys the top squad the next month, but it really doesn't matter. And yeah, man, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there indeed. So I hope you guys did enjoy this little recap of the AFCON, guys. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Man. Peace out.